gonna let a dog come on the last five minutes and win that trial. A lot of them will sit back there and when you got five to seven on the ground, I know it happens in SPO, a big pack on the ground, they'll sit back there and just stay clean and long for the ride. Then when you get down to three or four dogs, they can really do good. But what did they do with five or seven on the rack? Did they really help? It makes a difference to me. I never did let a dog win the last five minutes and be the, be the winner. If it was even up to that point, then yes. Absolutely. But if it wasn't even cool up to that point, then he couldn't come on the last five minutes and be a hero. It just didn't happen. When a club runs a trial under the italized small pack option set forth below, the judges shall order up all but five hounds when running in the winner's pack. In deciding on the place of the hounds, the judges may order up these five remaining hounds all at once, or they may order them picked up one at a time, beginning with the lowest rated hound and working up to the top hound. Now they can pick them up two at a time. I don't say that for three months there, and they can pick up one or two at a time. Whichever dog you tell them to pick up first, you say pick up red and white, and you're down to five. Then red's, red is MBQ, don't say it, but at that point, red is MBQ and white is four. If you say it the other way, if you say pick up white and blue, then white is MBQ. You are a fifth place hand at that point. But you can pick up two at a time. You can call field trial with five dogs on the ground. This is a pack trial, the SPO trial. Whenever I was judging a trial, I never did like to talk to my judging partner <coughs> loud enough to where the gallery could hear. Even whenever we, we were talking about what a dog was doing wrong in a pack or something. Never did like to be running along and holler out to the other judge, white collar's way out on the side or anything like that. I just didn't like to do that. You know, the other judge and I will come together somewhere close enough to talk where everybody can't hear it, even during the running of the dog. And the only thing they know is we pick that dog good. They don't really know, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not announcing to the world, it's like criticizing dogs or nothing, they just don't do that. When hounds are required to be cast to search for game and to be tested for gun shyness, the premium list and any evidence of shall state a small pack option. Hounds must be scored on searching ability. Hounds that refuse to search for game or interfere with other hounds that are searching for game must be ordered up by the judges. That's all small pack option stuff. They're required to be cast to search for game. And it probably says in here you must pick them up. But we have already talked about it one time. I know you, you, if they don't hunt, you must pick them up. You don't have a choice. If you don't pick them up and they're not hunting, you're not breaking, you're breaking the rules. Hounds must be tested for gun shyness, and all classes and gunfire shall only be simulated by means of a blank cartridge, 32 or larger. <coughs> the book actually says greater than 32. The 32 is except you shoot a blank cartridge, 32 is acceptable or larger than a blank shooting gun. Field trial committee shall decide which series the testing for gun shyness shall take place. Most clubs ask the judges. I've heard them ask the judges, what, 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 what series you want to shoot over? It's not the judge's decision. Now, if you want to give all your authority over to the judge, if I'm standing there, I'm not going to say nothing. It's not the judge's decision, it's the committee's decision which series to shoot over. If you got small entries, I'd shoot over her series. Judges may go, decide to go to winner's pack. 15 or 20 dogs, I'd, I'd certainly shoot over first series. If it's about 30, I might shoot over second series. But we don't really want you shooting over first, over winter pack. We don't want a gun shy dog to knock another dog out of a possible place. So we want the gun shy dogs out of there before we ever get to winter pack. You can shoot more than once. The judges may request that they more fire additional blank cartridges until they're satisfied that the pack is free of gun shy hounds. No hounds should be demurred or picked up for harking the gun dog. I don't see gun shy hounds much anymore. We first started shooting over them, you did. You saw quite a few. I won't say quite a few, but you go to trial and it wasn't unusual to see them. Anymore. But you don't see gun shy dogs much anymore. But it does happen. Oh, here's 
before we get into a problem, we got a deer rule in this thing. Except for running deer, it shall be a demerit. Trailing game other than an ounce shall not be considered a demerit. Nor shall any hound be demerited for failing to pack if the pack has been proven to be on the game other than an ounce. In the event that such a hound has been ordered up, it shall be reinstated in the pack. Dogs take off on a run. Dog refuses to get in. Goes out, maybe checks them, come back to you or whatever. And I've seen the judges pick it up. But then later decide they run an off game. Anything other than a rabbit is off game. If that dog, if you pick the dog up out of there and then discovered they're not running the rabbit, that dog needs to go back on the ground. If it's failing the heart to them, it needs to go back on the ground. Start over. You'll notice that deer is a demerit. Everybody wants to disqualify a hound for running deer. It's a demerit. To whatever degree they run it. I've seen some of them that run about 50 yards, turn around and come back. I've seen some that have been gone for days. Now that's out, isn't it? But to whatever degree they run a, run a deer is what you're supposed to demur them to. Now where you can get it, rule in there that says you eliminate hounds for interfering with a smooth run in your pack. What can interfere with a smooth run in your pack more than having a deer chase? Not much anything I know of. So if you eliminate them for running, disrupting the smooth run in your pack, you cover them. But, you know, saying I, I picked them up because they was running deer, it, you know, it can ir irritate people because you demerit, but how bad did they do it? And if it, you got a lot of good dogs there that day and they get off on a deer and cause you a problem, then you know, pick them up for disrupting the smooth run of your pack. The problem I have is running other off game is not a problem. Isn't that what it said? Except for running deer. Trailing game other than an ounce shall not be considered a demerit. Oh, yeah, I have a problem with that personally. I mean, off game is off game. That's what the rule book says. Go by the rule book. Judges are considered that the beagle is primarily a hunting hound, that its object is first to find game, second, to drive it in a decisive manner, and show an animated desire to overtake it. I used to have, a, I still got a field champion. He's 11, he'll be 12 years old in much. Whenever I finished him, I foolishly thought I might make a dollar off of him. I put him in the book. He's in hounds and hunting probably somewhere around 2003, 2004. I put in that ad, he run like he wanted supper. He did. He still does. He has a desire to overtake that rabbit. No, that didn't mean he was rough. That just means he had a desire to catch that rabbit. He wanted that rabbit. That's what we need to be looking for. We have a decisive manner to show an animated desire to overtake it. But the number of times a hound finds game shall not necessarily give it the pre preference, but the quality of the performance shall be given first consideration. Now, a lot of people think they're just talking about dogs that fight jump a rabbit. But when it, the number of times a hound finds game shall not be necessary to give it the preference. And a lot of judges out there, the only thing they're doing is, is judging chicks. You come out there and, the dog, and they're, going to, they're going to check, and the dog gets it, they give them a big old check mark. Run along, they do it again, drop it, the dog gets it, they give them a big old check mark. They come back and say, whoa, he got ten chicks. Wow, well, if you had picked the right dog, you might not have had a chick. Possible? What are the other dogs? What's driving the rabbit? What ran it 150 yards before they had a chick? What's sitting second and third and fourth and turns it out of the pack and keeps you from having a chick? Is that important? That's the overall performance of the dog. What got the chick? Now, that is important. Getting it is important. But what caused it? Might be the same dog that got it. Caused it. What drove it for you? What moved that line? You 
just going out there and judging checks to me don't give. I give a dog a double check for sitting second and third and turning it. They kept me from having a check. The only field trial I ever judged with anybody, winner's pack run without a check, 45 minutes. They like to kill me and my buddy. <laughs> Only time I ever seen the dog run, couldn't tell you what kind of dog he is other than that day. His name is Robert E. Lee, Fred Sheets on him, and he's still in the book for the now. Dog never run no front. Others were getting in front of him. But he had on a blue collar that day in the winter's pack. Man, he was sitting there, and bam, bam, bam. We had one hesitation. Thought you heard him quit barking for a second, and gone again. But he was sitting there, left, right, left. Anything over stick, man, he had it and was gone. He won the field trial that day. All six dogs come back in the winner's pack finish. Dog got picked up six was the UBGF hound of the year. Picked him up six because he didn't get nothing. But there was deep south dogs in there, there's UBGF dogs in there, there's all kinds of dogs in there. But that dog kept me from having a check for all that turning. He ended up winning the trial. I like to use it. Uh, anybody here want to run Dodges? Anybody drive a Dodge? I don't know now, but used to, Dodge had a beautiful ram head sitting up on the hood. Nice ornament, wasn't it? Looked real good. Did it ever get you from point A to point B? No. But it was sitting on the front. It looked good. What got you there? Steering wheel. When y'all judging trials, look for the steering wheel. What's keeping you on the line? That's your dog. That may be sitting first. It's not going to be sitting last, I promise you that. But it's not going to be sitting first, maybe. It could be sitting second and third. What's keeping that rabbit going? What's on the line, running that rabbit? That might be the best dog you got there. Robert E. Lee, I, I guarantee you, he was willing to run the front that day. He just, there was a couple in there had a little more power than he did. Now, they weren't rough. I'm not saying they were rough. But they overstepped it just three or four feet. He had them gone. Brad Sheets paid for this. The I know he was willing to run the front because he didn't wait for them to come to help him run that rabbit when he found it. He was gone. They had to catch up to him. about that dog. The only time I ever seen the first time I ever met Fred Sheets was that day. And it's a good little baby club. But the dog did not, wasn't sitting on the front, but he was a stirring wheel. What matter, it doesn't matter all the time who gets the check. What about the rest of the performance? I always had a problem with judges that say, well, I'll let them run 10 minutes or 5 minutes before I look at them. And that's okay. Right. What kept it running the first 10 minutes? Let the dog settle down. What runs a rabbit while the others are settling down? Isn't that important? I'd look at the whole run. Score the whole run. Wait 10 minutes they settle down. No. I, I, something's got to keep it going. So we need to be looking at the dog. Judges shall give credit to the hound that is better searcher and sticks to its work. At a check, all hounds should work industrially as close to where the loss occurred before going the further afield to look for the line. 